I'm Michael Kraft on the Virtual Geoint Center team, and in this video I'll be describing what I've accomplished this first week and what I plan to do for the remainder of the summer. Very little that I do this summer is actually directly related to the Virtual Geoint Center. Instead, I'll be focusing on projects that will support the virtual environment itself. Most of this first week was spent getting the new grid set up and preparing for the rest of the summer. Working closely with Design Digitally and Mark Siebert, the new Virtual Discovery Center should now be ready for teams to move in and start their projects. As you can see, we have uh, four regions down here. We're going to have four four region islands, and this this one up here is, I believe, the right state servers. We're having firewall issues right now, which is why only two of them are up, but Mark's going to be talking to a network admin there next week and getting those sorted out. One setback we've been having is that we're intermittently losing internet access on the Alpha network, which of course is the most important one. We're attacking this problem from all angles. Time Warner Cable is monitoring the modem for any signs of malfunction. We purchased a spare router, and on Monday at 10am, Don, an experienced Linux IT admin, will be paying us a visit to troubleshoot the network. This system is far too important for us to be having issues like this, so we plan on getting it fixed as soon as possible. I spent a lot of time this week setting up support features for the grid to make it easier to manage. Here is uh, the server control scripts that are from DDI that I modified to uh, log whenever the region starts or stops. It will log it to the system log. And we can view the system log on the onlo online syslog viewer that I installed that will show us all the current status messages coming from every single piece of equipment in the grid, even the routers. And so we can open this up and get an immediate picture of what's going on everywhere in the grid. Also, I took some time setting up Monit on each of the machines, which took a while to troubleshoot, but in the end I think it's worth it. Monit will re automatically restart any of the regions if they go down, or if they start running too slowly. And it also allows us to log in and see the current load on the server, and manually start and stop regions. For my main project this summer, I'll be doing a lot of open sim development and it'd be a pretty bad idea for me to do this to test my development on the production grid so I've set myself up a virtual development server here that I can connect to where I can do all of my open sim development without fear of even blowing up the entire operating system because I can make I can make snapshots of the machine that I can roll back to at any time or even clone off into and make new virtual machines. This took a pretty long time to set up but I think it'll make a great development environment. For the rest of the summer, I'll be working on my own two projects. The first I've dubbed Grid in the Box, a robust OpenSim grid package for IT admins, and the second I've been calling Grid2Go, a program to create dynamic grids from end-user machines. 